Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Andrew with SHT of Honey Badger, and today we're going to be talking about get home bags and why everyone should have one. Oftentimes I hear people talking about bug out bags, but in my opinion, a get home bag is much more vital and it's honestly far less talked about for some reason. In most SHTF situations, the reality is that your best option is going to be bugging in at your residence, and if you aren't home when an SHTF situation pops off, you have to have the ability to get there, and this bag is going to help you with that. I'm going to be going through and showing you what I have in my get home bag here. And to start with, I just use a normal backpack. I know you do see people out there using these big fancy Molly backpacks and their you know, Mr. Ranch backpacks and stuff. But one thing I want to throw out there is if an STHF or an SHTF situation is popping off, you don't want to drag attention to yourself. Those fancy, expensive backpacks you see out there covered in Molly and everything, uh, they have a purpose, but especially if you're in a more urban or suburban area, it's not going to be an ideal item to carry because it's going to be attention grabbing. And I'm going to bring that back up a couple different times in here too on some stuff I have in here. So before I even open up this bag, the first thing I do want to bring up is I would have some way of self-defense. Now this can vary a little bit based off where you are personally. I always conceal carry a firearm and an extra magazine. And I always keep a couple additional magazines in my vehicle. So I do have these here. I can just throw these on a belt and then put them back under a shirt or a hoodie where they're going to be concealed. So that's the first thing I would think about an option like this. You also could, if you're not comfortable with firearms, carry something like OC or a civilian version of a taser. But keep in mind, those are non-lethal options. They aren't always going to be effective. And if you have someone trying to use lethal force against you, you want to be able to use that pack. So, Think through some self-defense options. That would be one of the things I would always carry on your person. I mentioned that as well in my EDC video, but it's also an option that you need to have in your get home bag, or at least with your stuff in your get home bag. So then moving on to the actual bag here, I'm gonna start just from the front and work my way back. So the first pouch here, I have a pair of gloves because you never know what you're gonna be doing. If you're trying to get home from some location, you're not in a vehicle, you may be having to scale fences, you may be having to go through some wooded areas, or even if it's just a little cold, you're gonna want something to put on your hands to protect your hands while you're doing that. So first thing I have in here on this most outer pocket's a pair of gloves. Moving inward from there, in this pocket also, I have some wipes. Fact is, hopefully you can get home pretty quick if something happens, but if nature calls, nature calls, and you wanna carry some wipes or some toilet paper with you because you, you gotta take care of your business if you gotta take care of your business. Moving inward from that pouch, the next thing I have here is several different smaller items. So one of the most universally usable items out there that have plenty of different things is trash bags. So I have a couple of 55 gallon trash bags here. You can use these as an impromptu shelter if you have to. You can use these as a poncho cover or a uh, even use them kind of as a blanket. These also work out well if you need to, for some reason, pick up additional items, like let's say you're having additional stuff you need to carry with you. These thick 55 gallon trash liners here will work well for that. Um, but the biggest thing is being able to use these as kind of an impromptu shelter or use these more as a poncho cover or an extra insulating layer. So that's why I have a couple of these in here. And then moving forward in this pouch, I do have an emergency blanket as well. Um, you can use this in combination with these to kind of help insulate you, or this is just a different item to help keep you off the ground directly if you do have to sleep outside. Um, one thing I do want to point out with my bag in particular is most locations I'm at, I'm only within a couple hours of walking distance of my house. Um, you know, in the area I live in, even though it's a, it's a medium-sized metropolitan area in the Midwest, overall, I'm still within under a day's walking distance pretty much anywhere I'm at within that area but it definitely is good to have stuff like this as well because you never know if you do happen to get outside and you do have to stay the night somewhere, you can use this in combination with these trash bags to help make impromptu shelter, help keep yourself warmer, give some insulating factors. I also have kind of a boo-boo kit. So I do have a actual like stop the bleed trauma type kit I'll get to here in a few minutes, but having just some little band-aids, Neosporin type antibiotic ointment, alcohol baths to clean off injuries and stuff, those are gonna be good. Like I said, especially if you're on foot moving towards your house, the most direct paths may take you over some fences or it may take you through some more wooded areas. 
If you get scraped up, you get dinged up, you cut stuff, you're gonna wanna cover that up and disinfect it. Last thing you wanna do is get an infection and be dealing with that in the middle of some sort of SHTF scenario. Next in here, I do have some fire starters. Um, you know, so what I carry for fire starters, carry a lighter, carry matches. And then I've mentioned this in a couple other videos, but I do carry Vaseline and cotton rounds. It's just a really good way to start a fire. The other thing to point out too is with the Vaseline, you can also use like lip balm and stuff. So if you're gonna be out there and it's cold, you're gonna probably get some chap lips, get some cracked hands and stuff. So this can definitely help you as well because even though it's not necessarily gonna be vital to treat those right away, it, it's gonna make it a lot more comfortable, especially if it's gonna take you a day or two to get home. So kind of have the dual purpose with that Vaseline. And then the rest of these are start a fire. They're pretty lightweight to carry with you. And even if you're not going to end up needing to start a fire, I would still have it just because it's lightweight and easy to carry with you. Then the last thing I have in this pouch here is water purification tablets. So I do carry these here. I do have a water container as well in this that I'll get to, but I carry these over a filter just because while it's not the most ideal way to do it, it's easy to carry these with you. It's easy to use on the fly versus a lot of the filters. You either have to filter water out as you're getting it out of the water source, or you're gonna have to filter that water uh, over a longer period of time that's gonna make you more immobile versus these tablets. You can just drop them in after you collected your water, give them their 30 minutes or so to activate and clear out your bacteria, and then that water's safe to drink. So that's why personally I carry these. Um, you do have other options you could carry as well, such as a filter straw, but again, that requires you actually staying at that water source. So purification tablets, in my opinion, are the best option to go with for a bag like this. Moving back from there, the next thing I have is a empty bottle. Um, this happens to be a blender bottle, but you can use like an Nalgene bottle. You can use the flat pack bottles. Um, could use a traditional water bottle even. I personally have several of these blender bottles and I typically always carry at least one, if not two of them filled up with me anytime I leave the house. It's just a force of habit at this point. I grab them, put them in there. I store this one empty, um, you know, which I, I get that. It may be more tempted to store these full, but I don't wanna risk having these leak or freezing, especially in colder environments. So that's why I just bring ones in and out of my truck with me. But I do keep an extra container in here just in case something happens, I run across a water source, I can use this in combination with my purification tablets to give me some additional water to carry with me. Moving forward from there, I have food. So personally, I have food here that is stuff you can all eat on the fly. Um, for lack of a better words, these are basically kind of a homemade MRE. So on these, I have a couple different items like trail mix, some beef sticks. Uh, I do have some gummies as well. Those will kind of give you a little bit of sugar and kind of a pick me up if you're moving, but just kind of a variety of stuff to help keep you sustained. It's not gonna feel like a full meal, but it's definitely going to keep you sustained. And calorie wise, uh, these come in at about 1800 calories for each one of these I have packed. So, you know, realistically you could last depending on how much you want to stretch it. Uh, probably three or four days off of these at a minimum. Ideally, these you don't only wanna last about uh, one to two days though, but I could make these last up to three or four if I had to, but I would definitely have some stuff like this with you just to kind of keep you up, especially if you're operating in colder environments like I would be during the winter if I had to go somewhere, you're gonna want some additional sustainment because you're gonna burn more calories. So having some sort of food in this bag is gonna be important but I would personally avoid anything you have to cook. So like everything in these, I can just eat on the spot. So the freeze dried food's good for a lot of stuff, but if for example, you carry the freeze dried food, you have to carry a way to cook it. You have to stop to cook it and you need additional water to cook it versus these, just open up a package. I can even eat most of these as I'm on the move. So that's why I specifically have these contents here. Now, moving on to the next part of the bag, this is going to be that main compartment and going into the last couple items I have here. The first thing is my trauma kit. So this is more, I guess, a stop the bleed kit, as I've mentioned before. Uh, I keep this in my truck, so it sticks next to this bag, but it fits in nicely just on the top. So if I ever need to leave the vehicle and move on foot, I can always grab this out of the back of my truck, shove it in the top of the bag and hit on my way down the road on foot here. In this particular kit, this is where I have some different quick cloth. I have a couple tourniquets, gauze, uh, more emergency blankets, things like that, that are gonna help you out in a trauma situation. But I do have it set up that I can just drop this on the top of the bag if I need to eject from the vehicle and get moving. So let's set that over here. 
And then on that package, moving forward, socks. You always wanted a couple extra pairs of socks if possible. Um, you know, I'd say enough said, you need to change your socks out if your feet get wet, otherwise that can cause some problems. The other thing as well is you happen to, you know, maybe be wearing a pair of socks and you get a hole in it, it rips, wears through while you're moving, because you may be doing a lot more walking than you're used to. You want another pair of socks to switch into to try to protect your feet and help you from getting blisters and things like that. Next in this bag, I have a pair of long johns. Again, where I'm at right now, it get pretty cold during the winter. So I always carry a pair of long johns in this bag and I carry an extra hoodie. These are just extra insulating layers. They're gonna be good to have on you if you ever need to bundle up. Now, personally, I always try to dress according to the weather to start with, so I'm not going to be running around in shorts and a t-shirt when it's, you know, 10 degrees outside. I'm gonna be dressed appropriately to start with if I have to leave my vehicle, but I want these extra layers just in case I need to bundle up more, or, you know, maybe I'm starting off and it's a little bit warmer out than normal, so I may not be dressed as heavily. I can always throw these on to add some extra layers and keep myself warm, even if that temperature drops. And the next thing I have here, and this is going to be the remaining contents that I carry, is going to be a flashlight. So right here I have a LED flashlight. It's one of these little guys. This is just a cheap Walmart light, but it works well. Um, so you definitely want a flashlight with you. You could also use headlamps as well. Headlamps are another great option. That way you're able to use it hands-free. And then I do carry extra batteries for that flashlight. I would recommend either wrapping your batteries up in tape or keeping them in kind of a spare holder like this. I wouldn't let them just free float in the bag. Um, a, they'll end up getting lost probably, or you'll have to dig through everything when you need them. And B, you don't want them accidentally contacting with each other and just killing the batteries. So definitely store them in something like this or wrap them up in tape carry a compass. Uh, realistically, I am very familiar with my area, but if I happen to be somewhere unfamiliar or I do get a little bit disoriented and it's dark out, having that compass is going to help you get your bearings. I do carry a two-way radio as well. The antenna is off for storage, but this is a ham radio that can also work with GMRS. So in a SHTF situation, the other people I know with these type of radios, I can communicate with, coordinate with if need be, I can also contact, again, local repeaters that are able to operate off-grid in SHTF situations. So having one of these for me is a vital thing to have. Comes in lightweight. Just got to make sure you keep your battery charged, switch it out every so often. And these will last quite a while, especially if you're not constantly monitoring. If I'm just turning this on to make contact and then turning it back off as I'm moving, I could easily make this radio battery to last several days. Again, the goal is that this whole kit's only going to work for a day or two because I should be able to make it to my destination in under a day, but I can make this last several days if I have to. And the last thing here that I carry with me is a map. Having a map of your local roads is always a great thing to have. This is just a state map. So I'm in Nebraska, I'm giving that away here, but this is a Nebraska state map. You do have other options out there as well out of having one of these road maps, though most states, these will include a lot of your metropolitan areas and an overall state highway system map. You can get print off copies from Google Maps. Those are great to have if you want more detailed areas. And then also most states have a website for their state department of transportation that give you printable maps. So you can print off maps of usually your counties, your cities, and your states. And those are broken down relatively thorough as well. So you do have those as another option when it comes to getting maps in a bag like this. So out of everything here, this is at least what I carry with me. One thing I do want to throw out there, because I can already kind of anticipate this when you look at some other people's get home bags, is no, I do not recommend carrying a rifle. I've seen some other people out there, like say War po Warrior Poet Society talked about in their get home bags, he carries a rifle. The one thing with that though is A, that's a lot of weight additional to what you're already carrying, and B, it's going to attract unwanted attention. I'm more proponent on a defensive tool. The most you should probably carry in, in this type of situation, at least, is going to be a handgun. Rifles have their place, but when you're trying to get home in an SHTF situation, more than likely you're not dealing with some sort of crazy societal collapse. You may be dealing with more of a natural disaster, major power outages, things like that, but you don't want to be running around with a rifle as it's going to attract attention. 
And if it's something you can't carry with you and you're leaving it in your vehicle, you're leaving that at the will of potentially malicious individuals to gain access to at some point. So I would not personally recommend carrying one of those in your kit unless you're in a very rural area where you don't have that concern. Another thing I wanna address as well is when it comes to additional clothing, what you carry, I would not recommend wearing any bright color clothing or carrying bright color clothing in this bag. So I'd avoid things like hunter orange or safety yellow. Uh, in some environments, they might not stick out so well, like an urban environment. You might have a lot more people running around in those colors, but overall, they're very attention grabbing. Same thing with camouflage. When you're picking your clothing out for this, I would also avoid camouflage. Same thing with the bags, as that's just going to be attention grabbing. And for lack of a better word, you want to think of this more as a gray man setup where you're not going to be wearing stuff that's going to be grabbing a bunch of attention from people out there as you're moving through an area. Um, those are kind of the points I want to outline today, and that's what's in my bag here. Those contents are laid out in front of me. If you guys have anything different you carry with you, or you think that I'm missing something vital or something that I need to adjust in this bag, I would love to hear it. Drop it down in the comments below. We'd also love it if you can hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. But most of all, though, I want to tell everybody out there, stay safe and stay prepared.